So welcome to today's Tuesdays at 2. Really excited about today's topic, interviewing. So you're almost there. You've embarked on an onerous job search, and now it's about to end. Hopefully, you get to the interview stage. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, you are in multiple interviews. Even in today's economy, global economy, and I have clients all over the world, you, if you have an aggressive job search and know where you want to go and pinpoint where you want to go, you can get yourself into multiple offers. So multiple interviews, multiple offers. So today we're going to be talking about interviews. So you're getting so close. This is not this is the end of the wrapping up stage. So of the of your job search, hopefully, you can get yourself into multiple interviews. So the interview really begins way, way ahead of when you get the schedule for the interview. You should always be ready for an interview because today, put yourself in an executive recruiter's chair. He might be looking for talent like just like you. And uh, they are uh, they, they they see you on LinkedIn or another social media platform or they have your CV, your resume and they give you a call and then you embark instantly into an interview. Are you ready? Are you snappy? Do you sell yourself? Are you savvy in interviews? Interviewing is a huge topic. You need to be. Well, first impressions count. You need to win. This is your chance. You're, you're narrowing that competition down. And you want to show that why you are the perfect candidate for that particular job. So what you need to do before you go into the interview, and I can't overestimate this, overemphasize this, you need to uh, research. You need to practice. Those are the two elements that is going to help you in an interview. Yeah, you're going to get nerves. I get nerves every time I appear on live, although that's diminishing every time. But you are going to get nerves. It's human nature. You get nerves. OK, so put them to bed. Think about what is special about you, because an interview is your sales opportunity. It's your chance to make that impression and win the way and want them to call you for the next interview and the next interview and hopefully the job offer. So let's go through the interview stages. You need to think of it as a two way street. I'm going to boil it down to the nitty gritty, the simplistic way of reviewing a, what is an interview. It's a conversation. Just like I'm having a conversation with you right now through a camera, you are going to have a conversation with an interview probably today, sadly, because interviews aren't generally conducted in person right now. Hopefully next year they will be. Uh, you are going to have an interview with somebody through a camera just like we're interacting right now. So you need to practice. You need to be totally aware of the software that they are using. Now, when you get the invite for the interview, ask them which uh, virtual communication tool are they using? Could it be Teams? Could it be Zoom? Could it be StreamYard? There's a multitude of platforms out there. And since COVID, several others have come into play. But Zoom and uh, Teams are about the two major ones. And then you've got the big corporate ones, WebEx and whatever. But if you aren't familiar with that platform, that application, make yourself familiar with that pl uh, platform or application. It would be terrible. You get on there five minutes to the hour and you don't know how this works and how that works and whatever. That would freak me out. It would freak you out. And you don't want to. You want to lessen those nerves. You want to breathe. You want to have a good show. You only get one chance. So if it's Zoom, Go on to YouTube and you're not familiar with uh, with uh, Zoom. Go on to YouTube. There are lots and lots of how to um, videos on YouTube. If it's Teams, go on to YouTube again. Go and look and make yourself familiar with that platform. 
A year ago, these virtual communications used to scare the pants off me. Now I use them every day, probably four or five times a day. I'm very familiar with them, but you have to be familiar with them. So if you've got an interview with ABC company or XYZ company, you need, before the interview, you need to start connecting with people as part of your research. Off the interview uh, uh, silo, somebody may be in the department where you might be the boss or the boss's boss or whatever, and you need to start networking with people through LinkedIn and then maybe a call or a Zoom, Teams or whatever. You need to start networking with people who work for that company or who've just recently left. So if you, if you, if somebody left ABC company in the last six months, they still know the intricacies, the culture of that particular company, and they have no allegiance to that particular company, so they can open up a lot more. So you need to start networking and start communicating by phone, via, via virtual communications with current and past employees of that company to do your research. What do they talk about? Okay, the water cooler isn't around today because nobody is in the office, but it will be. What did they talk about the water cooler when it was a water cooler and they were standing around talking about the future of the company, the services, whatever. You need to understand the corporate culture and you also need to understand the history of the company. So Google that company. Look on the history. Has it been merged? Has it uh, been acquired? How big was it when it started? And how big is it now, etc.? Number of employees, number of continents, number of offices or whatever. Also, research the products and services that they provide. And if you believe that you can add to their product offering or their service offering, this an interview is a good platform, a good venue for you to sort of subtly hint that, oh, during my past employee with DER company, I introduced this service or this product. And I believe it will make a great addition to your services or products. So be confident, be bold, be brassy. Try and keep those nerves down. Breathing exercises before, even rubbing your shoulders and whatever, doing some exercises like this. Yes, it's stupid, but it will make you feel far more confident. So it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. An interview is a meeting of the minds. It's a conversation between two people or maybe a group of people, a group, a panel, maybe four or five, and you, the candidate. You are the candidate. So make sure that you are prepared if you want, if you, you need to ask whether it's going to be a panel interview or an in-person, one-on-one. But it's still a meeting of the minds. Basically, it's a conversation to see whether you will fit into their culture and you can bring them value. So it's a sales proposition. So anybody got any questions as, as this, uh, as this uh, Tuesdays at 2 unfolds, please feel free to put them in the, uh, in the comments. So before you go into the interview, make sure you are well prepared. You cannot rehearse Part of that preparation is you need to review the job description. Make sure you're dressed, you're dressed suitably, your attire. You don't need to dress down below, but you need to dress appropriately up above. So attire is very, very important. Just like a regular interview, an in-person interview, you also need to arrive early. So don't leave it to the last minute, two or three minutes before the hour. You need to probably be online 20 minutes, quarter of an hour, 15 minutes before the actual interview. That's going to make you feel far more relaxed. Keep it calm. The more nerves, the more your heart pumps, the worse it's going to be for you. 
So attire, make sure you're properly attired and make sure you arrive early. Now you can practice the questions that you're going to be asked. I don't have time to go through all the questions, but there's going to be many, many questions that you're going to be asked. But remember, time when you, you don't have to repeat that question or well, repeat the question, but don't answer it straight away. You can take a little while. You can take a few seconds to digest it in your mind before you then decide to answer. Don't just come straight out because that's going to come back and haunt you. Think about the question, maybe repeat the question, and then after a few seconds, answer that question very eloquently, very confidently. Try and keep the ums and the ahs and the nerves at bay. Try and very, very succinctly answer that question. Don't go out of the realm of that question because the further you do, the further it's going to dig you deeper into maybe a hole. Be very specific. Listen to the verbiage of that question and answer that question only. But as I said before, it's a two way street. Ask questions too. ask where you will be in the next couple of years. Where do they think you will be as if you are currently employed at that uh, at that company? Body language. Don't just sit like this and think that body language is going to help you. Body language is to excite you, to, to, to make you make the audience at the other end uh, excited by you. If you sit there and monotone and talk like this and don't vary your voice, and then you sit much just like this, but you don't wave your arms, then that is bad. So I'm going to have on one of my future podcasts a body language expert who's going to be talking about body language both in an in-person and a virtual communication, um, virtual communication uh, interview. So body language is important. Keep your answers concise. No negatives. This is your chance, your chance to shine. So we've got some questions here. But before we go uh, on, how brass, let me put, I'm going to this one. How brassy before? Oh, that's a great question, Alan. So, yeah, don't be too bombastic, but be confident. They're going to hire you for your confidence. They're not going to hire you because of your laid back and whatever. But don't be, oh, it's, yeah, you're right, so arrogant that they're, they're going to think, oh, gosh, this guy's got a chip on his shoulder. No, that's not what they're going to hire. So uh, be, 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 um, be sensitive to that. But sell yourself. This is your sales proposition. You only get one, one kick of the can here. No second chances in an interview. And today, interviews can go to three or four or even five interviews. That's why the hiring process can be so long today. So great question. Body language, keep your answers concise. As I say, don't go out like this. Keep it concise, because the further you go out, you'll start to babble. You'll start to go on and on and on. And really, really, they're asking for a concise answer. But remember, you ask questions too. Say so you're interviewed. Let me just put this on here. Rhea. Say you're interviewed, but land the job, but don't land the job. How can I find out what I said or did wrong? Now, that is a really good question, and I hear that so many times. There's no perfect way of answering this, but I am finding, depending where you live in the world, you will get more feedback from your interview on why you didn't land a job in Europe and the further east you go than here in North America. Now, Ray, I don't know where you're based, or it looks like you're based here. You've got CPA and CA uh, in North America, um, probably here in Canada. Um, but yeah, it's tough. There is a, 
a misconception that oh, people don't want to talk to you after the interview, but place yourself in their minds, whether they be an executive recruiter or whether they be an HR professional, their workload is horrendous. There's only enough hours in the day. There's only eight to 10 hours, 12 hours in a work day. And if you didn't pass that candidacy, they're not inclined. I know it's very, very impersonal. I don't like it myself because I think it's very impersonal. But see if you can ask them because it's a learning exercise. And if it's a negative, you need to learn that negative. So next time you can share it, send it into a positive. So that's a great question. Say you're interviewed, but don't land the job. How can I find out what I said or did wrong? Don't bug them too much because you never know. Another job fitting your candidacy might come up in the next few weeks or few months and the same decision makers are there and you don't want to be uh, considered a, 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 a pest. That's what that's what some people might, might think you are. So, yes, try and find out. Send, a, send an email and, and thank them for their time and say, I would like, I'm a learning, I'm learning about myself. Please, can you, can we have five minutes conversation on the phone or Zoom or whatever? So uh, let's go to um, the next one. Oh, there's some good questions coming in here. If my passion was, pl if my passion was placing people, I would be passionate about helping others via feedback. Mm, not too sure. If my passion was placing people, I would be passionate about helping us. Yep, that's very true. But sadly, um, career decision makers um, aren't always like that. I totally agree with you, George. But uh, um, sadly, people today aren't always like that. So let's continue. Anybody got any other questions? Keep firing them. These are really good questions. I want you to all learn. I'm here to share my knowledge, my vast 26-year knowledge with you. So I'm here. You have me every Tuesday afternoon, 2 p.m. So no negative comments about your previous employer. Negative comments, period. This is a chance for you to be positive, positive, positive to show the person at the other end, whether they be uh, individual or a group, that you are the perfect candidate and the reason why you are the perfect candidate. You only get probably about a maximum of an hour and an hour can pass so fast. What are the next steps so that you in your mind can be prepared on what the next steps are? Now, if they're interviewing eight candidates, you work out the logistics of that. It can take a long time. And then they go to another interview and they go to another interview. Now, the only ones that are streamlined these days are interim positions. And they are quite good for very senior executives. And by the way, there are executive recruiters who specialize, who specialize in interim positions. They are well paid. But I warn you, you have to work long hours. It's a challenge to get in there and uh, you, that you have to embrace and accept that challenge and really uh, show that you can meet that challenge. And a lot of interim jobs, executive recruiters will tell you, turn into full-time gigs. So they may be an interim for six months. They may be an interim for a year. But I can tell you from my clients, Many of them have turned into full-time jobs. So ask the next steps. Finally, as you go out and, and uh, 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 as you wrap it up, thank them for their time. Verbally thank them for the time, but double that. Double that with a handwritten, yes, snail mail thank you note. So buy some good thank you notes and actually hand write. When was the last time you received a handwritten thank you note by mail, by post? I'm going to say it was a long time. But you are positioning yourself as the candidate. 
place yourself in there, in the recruiter or the HR professional's mind. If they get a note from you via post, via mail, and they open it, that's going to bring your name up into their uh, mind again. It's another psychological hit on their mind. And it's also a plus plus for you for very little cost and very little time. I'm not too sure who this LinkedIn user is. I wonder who this LinkedIn user is. Great to see you after many years, Martin. You look and sound well. Keep up the great work. I don't know who that LinkedIn. Perhaps you can uh, uh, send me a message afterwards because now I'm not going to be able to uh, uh, sleep. I'm going to think about, well, who emailed me there? So hopefully today you've got a lot of information um, about interviewing. Have anybody got any other questions? I'm more than happy to answer them. If not, I will be back here next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, where the topic next Tuesday will be number 40, will be 46, Number episode number 46 will be Want Your Dream Job, My Five Tips to Land That Goal. So hopefully you will join me. Let me see. Uh, what this one uh, is question is, should interviewer, interviewees connect with interviewers on LinkedIn? If yes, at what point should it be done? Oh, now that's you coming with some great questions, Raya. Um, yes, I would. It's been, it shows you're very proactive and it gives them a chance. Well, hopefully they've done their due diligence on you. So they viewed your pro, uh, LinkedIn profile many, many times. But yeah, so I would actually... Uh, if you ha if you aren't already linked in with them, I would link in with them after the interview and then uh, mention something that entices you uh, them in that introduction. Don't just click that button and uh, I want to connect. You need to be you need to verbalize. This applies to everything. Never on LinkedIn. It's a personalized platform. Never, ever. Uh, just set, press that button and think people at the other end, I, I, I don't like it myself. I want people to send me a message. Why should you connect with me? So then bring something up in that interview in the body of that uh, introduction and then say, please, will you uh, connect with me? And then start sharing, be active on LinkedIn, because then when they're coming to the next stage of the hiring process, they can see that Raya is very, very active. Anybody got any other questions? George, have had no success with LinkedIn reach outs when I get hiring managers names. Any specific things to convey in the invite message? Now, there's another great question. Well, there's some good ones today. Um, I have been in this business now 26 years and I've seen networking and connections evolve over the years. Many people have been terminated and those people have been terminated, didn't really want to network while they were gainfully employed. But when they were in career transition and terminated, they thought, you know what? I never connected with that person or the, all those people, but now I need to connect with valuable decision makers, people who can open up leads for me. Because bearing in mind, those of you who listen to me uh, on uh, what follow me on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook and uh, also listen to me each week on Tuesdays or two, only a small percentile, a small percentile of jobs are advertised. The rest is hidden. So yeah, any specific things to convey in the invite message? Um, well, if you wanted to go and work for a particular company, I would say that you are, would be excited to have an informational interview if you wanted to, if you, because you never know what jobs they have available. As I say, the bulk of those are hidden. So an informational hit interview can uh, help you get foot in the door and uh, say uh, you like their products, you like their services, make them feel good, be positive. No, absolutely zero negatives. Let's go to the next question. We've got some, thanks so much for your answers, Martin. Very helpful. Thank you, Raya, for your questions. It's a two-way street. This is an interview. 
So it's a two-way street. So I want you to be engaged. That means another question coming in. We're getting some really good questions here. Do recruiters consider LinkedIn learning certificates while evaluating skill set of a candidate? Deepak, great question, another one. Um, okay, so the more learning you can do and show on your LinkedIn, the better it's going to be for you. If you just dropped off your education in, uh, in 2007 or 2012 or 2015, that's going to be a, a negative to you. You need to show continuous learning. Remember, you are in a race. And if you can eliminate all those red flags, a lack of any education, any education is a red flag. If you wipe out all those red flags, the chances of you getting to the interview and hopefully accepting a job, getting a job offer are raised. So yeah, I hold the, the um, LinkedIn learning certificates uh, uh, as good. Um, but you also perhaps need to do uh, many of the online courses at academic institutions across the world. And if you can afford it, said this before, see if you can get a, uh, a certificate from um, a, a well-known global university, just a one-week course or a two-week course, three-week course or whatever, and that will enhance your candidacy. Another question? We're getting a really good, good one, Sal. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, uh, George, for your input. I, as I say, this is a two-way street. Anybody got any other questions? If not, I will uh, wrap it up right now. I'm here for you. If you have any other questions, I'll be here next Tuesday at 2. But please go to my uh, YouTube channel, Martin Buckland, on YouTube, where there is a wealth of YouTubes. Some, many already put there, and, and there was one new one being released every week through to the end of the year, and there will be a lot more. If you've got a, uh, uh, something you would like me to shoot a YouTube on, please send me a message, and I'll be happy to, to do a, uh, a YouTube video specifically for you, but put it on my YouTube channel. But I will be back here next week. Deepak, thank you, Martin, for the information. You're very welcome, Deepak. Uh, so hopefully you will come back uh, next week. If you are an executive master of business administration, an EMBA, I will be hosting an EMBA day live 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on May the 15th, when I will be answering all your questions to do with career management for an EMBA or a Sloan Fellow. It's been great helping you. Hopefully you just got one little snippet from today. If you come in every week, you get one little snippet of my conversation with you and that will help you in your career management. So thanks for coming in. Thanks for spending some time with me. Hopefully you gained some information and thanks. So, so, so remember that thank you note. That is going to distinguish you. That handwritten snail mail is going to distinguish you from the rest. You only get one, just one kick of the can. Have a great week and I'll be here for you if you have any questions. But please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe and press the bell button where you will be notified of all the future videos coming down the pipeline. Have a great week and we'll see you next week when we're talking about dream jobs. What can you want? You, I bet, want a dream job. You can all get there. Tune in next week.